Hello everyone, our topic for today is the anterior triangle. First, let us discuss about the boundaries of the anterior triangle first. The anterior boundary is the midline of the neck. This is the midline of the neck. This is the anterior boundary. Anterior boundary is midline of the neck. The posterior boundary is the anterior border of sternocleidomastoid muscle. This is the posterior boundary. This is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. And this is the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Posterior border is the anterior border of sternocleidomastoid muscle. And the superior border is the inferior border of the mandible. This is the inferior border of the mandible. Superior border is inferior border of mandible. The roof of this triangle is the platysma muscle. The roof is the platysma muscle. And the floor is, floor is formed by pharynx, larynx and the thyroid. And these are the boundaries. And let us see them again. This is the posterior border which is formed by the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. And this is the anterior border which is formed by the midline of the neck. And this is the superior border which is formed by the inferior border of the mandible. And we also have the roof which is formed by the platysma muscle and the floor which is formed by the pharynx, larynx and the thyroid. And now let us see the arteries in the anterior triangle. Major arteries are the common carotid arteries. This is the right common carotid artery and this is the left common carotid artery. The right common carotid artery arises from the brachiocephalic trunk. The left common carotid artery arises from the arch of iota. Here is the right common carotid artery and here is the left common carotid artery. The right common carotid artery enters into the rec near the right sternoclavicular joint. This is the right sternoclavicular joint. This is the right sternoclavicular joint. Left common carotid artery enters into the neck behind the left sternoclavicular joint. This is the left sternoclavicular joint. Here is the right sternoclavicular joint and here is the left sternoclavicular joint. Right and left enter into the neck behind the, behind the sternoclavicular joints. Here the thyroid cartilage, common carotid artery divides into the internal carotid artery and the external carotid artery. The carotid artery divides into the external and internal. External carotid artery, internal carotid artery. This divides near the thyroid cartilage. There is a dilation here in the common carotid artery. This is known as the carotid sinus. This is the dilation here in the common carotid artery. This carotid sinus contains the receptors that helps to monitor the BP, that is the blood pressure. This carotid sinus is innervated by the glossopharyngeal nerve. We also have another receptors that is in the carotid body. We have the receptors in the carotid body that detect the changes in the oxygen levels. Carotid body is innervated by the glossopharyngeal nerve and also the vagus nerve. Let us discuss about the internal carotid artery. Internal carotid artery doesn't give any branches in the neck. Essence towards the base of the skull and enters into the cranial cavity through the carotid canal. Carotid artery supplies the cerebral hemispheres, the eyes, the contents of orbit and also the forehead. That's all about the internal carotid artery. Let us discuss about the external carotid artery. This is the external carotid artery. It gives rise to eight branches. Two are the terminal branches. And six are the major branches. The first branch is the superior thyroid artery. This is the superior thyroid artery. It descends down and supplies the superior pole of the thyroid gland. This arises from the anterior aspect. This is the anterior side and this is the posterior side. And it supplies to the superior pole of the thyroid. And the second branch is ascending pharyngeal artery. This is the ascending pharyngeal artery. It arises from the posterior aspect. This is the ascending pharyngeal artery. It arises from the posterior aspect. 
This supplies the pharynx, the middle ear, and also the cranial meninges, and some of the prevertebral muscles. Third branch is the lingual artery. This is the lingual artery. This arises from the anterior aspect. This lingual artery arises from the external carotid artery near the hyoid bone. This is the hyoid bone here. This lingual artery arises at the level of the hyoid bone. The lingual artery supplies the posterior tongue. Next, the facial artery. Here is the facial artery. And this also arises from the anterior aspect. This facial artery moves deep to the stylohyoid muscle and deep to the posterior belly of the digastric muscle and also the mandibular gland and also the mandible. This is the mandible. After then, it enters into the face. This facial artery is the major supply for the face. And next one is the occipital artery. This is the occipital artery here. This arises from the posterior aspect. This arises at the same level of origin of facial artery. And this supplies the posterior aspect of the scalp. And the next one is the posterior auricular artery. This is the posterior auricular artery. This arises from the posterior aspect. And this supplies the parotid gland and some neighboring muscles. And the structures in the temporal bone auricle and the skull and we have the two more terminal branches the maxillary artery and the one more is superficial temporal artery this is the maxillary artery here this is the maxillary artery and this is the superficial temporal artery this is the superficial temporal artery okay. that's all about the arteries now let us discuss about the nerves and the first one is the facial nerve this facial nerve emerges from the stylomastoid foramen. This facial nerve innovates two muscles in the anterior triangle. They are the posterior belly of the digastric muscle and the stylohyoid muscle. These are the two muscles innervated by the facial nerve. And also we have one more muscle that is platysma. This platysma is also innervated by the facial nerve which is the roof of the anterior triangle. And the next one is the glossopharyngeal nerve. This glossopharyngeal nerve exits the cranial cavity through the jugular foramen. This is the glossopharyngeal nerve here in the diagram. This is the glossopharyngeal nerve. It descends in between external carotid and internal carotid arteries. And this supplies the stylopharyngeus and the pharynx. These both are supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve. Now let us see the vagus now. This vagus now exits the cranial cavity through the jugular foramen. This is the vagus now here which is shown. This is the vagus now. Vagus now is the content of the carotid sheet. Vagus now branches are a motor branch to the pharynx and one branch to the carotid body and it also gives rise to superior laryngeal nerve. This superior laryngeal nerve gives rise to the two nerves. There are external laryngeal nerve and the internal laryngeal nerve. And the next nerve is the accessory nerve. This is the accessory nerve here. This nerve exits the cranial cavity from the jugular foramen. This, this innervates the sternocleidomastoid muscle, also the trapezius muscle. And the next is the hypoglossal nerve. And this is the hypoglossal nerve here. This is the hypoglossal nerve. Let me zoom it and show you. This is the hypoglossal nerve. This is the hypoglossal nerve. In this diagram, this is the hypoglossal nerve. This exits the cranial cavity to the hypoglossal canal. And this supplies the tongue. And the next one is the transverse cervical nerve. This is the transverse cervical nerve. This arises from the anterior rami of C2 and C3 of the cervical plexus. This is the cutaneous branch. And the next one is the ansa cervicalis. Let me zoom it and show you. This is the ansa cervicalis. 
which is in the form of a loop here. This is the superior root of ansa cervicalis. This is the inferior root of the ansa cervicalis. This arises from the C1, C2 and C3 fibers of the cervical plexus. And this joins the hypoglossal nerve. Here is the hypoglossal nerve and this ansa cervicalis joins the hypoglossal nerve. And that's all about the nerves and the anterior triangle. Now let us discuss about the veins in the anterior triangle. The major vein here is the internal jugular vein. This internal jugular vein drains from the skull, the brain and the superficial face and some parts of the neck. And that's all about the veins. Now let us look at the individual triangles in the anterior triangle and the contents of them. First let us look at the submandibular triangle. This is also known as the digastric triangle. And now let us look at the boundaries. Superiorly, we have the inferior border of the mandible. And this is the inferior border of the mandible. Inferiorly, we have the anterior and posterior bellies of the digastric muscle. This is the anterior belly and this is the posterior belly of the digastric muscle. And in the floor, we have the mylohyoid and the hypoglossus muscle. This is the hypoglossus muscle here and this is the mylohyoid muscle here. In the roof, we have the deep layer of cervical fascia. Now, let us look at the contents of the submandibular triangle. The first one is the submandibular gland. Here is the submandibular gland. This is the submandibular gland. And we also have the submandibular lymph nodes. And we have the hypoglossal nerve. This is the hypoglossal nerve. And we have the mylohyoid nerve. And this is the mylohyoid nerve. And we also have the apex of the parotid gland. Here is the parotid gland. And we have the facial vessels. That is facial artery and the facial vein. This is the facial vein. And this is the facial artery. And let us look at them once more. This is the submandibular gland here. And this is the hypoglossal nerve. This is the mylohyoid nerve. And this is the parotid gland. And these are the facial vessels. That's all about the contents of the submandibular triangle. Now let us look at the submental triangle. This is the submental triangle here. First let us look at the boundaries. Inferiorly we have the hyoid bone. This is the hyoid bone here. And laterally we have anterior bellies of the digastric muscle. These are the anterior bellies of the digastric muscle. And the floor is the mylohyoid muscles. And the contents in the submental triangle are the submental lymph nodes. We have the submental lymph nodes and the submental triangle. That's all about the submental triangle. Now let us look at the carotid triangle. First let us look at the boundaries. Inferior medially, we have the superior belly of omohyoid. This is the carotid triangle here. This is the superior belly of omohyoid muscle. Superiorly, we have the posterior belly of the digastric muscle. This is the posterior belly of the digastric muscle. Inferior laterally, we have the sternocleidomastoid muscle. This is the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Now, that's all about the boundaries. Now let us look at the contents. First one is the common carotid artery. This is the common carotid artery here. This common carotid artery bifurcates into the internal carotid artery and the external carotid artery. This is the internal carotid artery and this is the external carotid artery. External carotid artery gives rise to 8 branches. We have only the 5 branches in the carotid triangle. And we also have the internal jugular vein. This is the internal jugular vein. And we also have the vagus now. This is the vagus now. This is the vagus. And we also have the hypoglossal nerve. Hypoglossal nerve is the content of both carotid triangle and the digastric triangle. This is the hypoglossal nerve here. And we also have the ansa cervicalis and also the cervical sympathetic chain. We also have the branches of the vagus nerve. They are superior laryngeal nerve. Superior laryngeal nerve is divided into the external laryngeal nerve and the internal laryngeal nerve. The common carotid artery 
cavity and the internal jugular vein and the vagus nerve. These three are the contents of the carotid sheath. These are all the contents of the carotid triangle. Now let us discuss about the muscular triangle. This is the muscular triangle here. First let us look at the boundaries. Superior laterally, we have the superior belly of the omohyoid muscle and the anterior belly of sternothedomastoid muscle. This is the ante anterior belly of the sternothedomastoid muscle. We have the median plane of the neck. Inferiorly, we have the median plane of the neck. Now let us look at the contents. We have the sternothyroid and the sternohyoid muscles. That's all about the muscular triangle. If you like the content, please do like, share, subscribe to my channel. And if you have any queries, please do comment down in the comment section below.